Hey everybody, welcome to the David Jacobs Show this week. Man, I got a treat for you guys this week. Now I know we've been having a lot of local celebrities here um, coming on the show, but today I got a guy with some wits, some talents, and some surprisingly good looks. I'm talking about my buddy Grant Johnson. He's going to be stopping by in just a moment. He is a local comedian, a former musician, and uh, I believe he's been doing some um, EMT work as well, so that's pretty good. He's kind of a busy man, but... The guy's uh, incredibly funny, and he'll be stopping by in just a minute. First of all, I just want to say thanks for everybody who's been listening to the show. We appreciate all the great feedback, and let's get this thing started. The David Jacobs Show. Everybody, welcome to the David Jacobs Show. And man, we have Grant Johnston in the house. How you doing, Grant? Pretty good, man. Yourself? Good. So, what's your take on anal penetration? Who's getting penetrated? Um, you are. Oh, not so much. You know, I'm not into that sort of. Uh, I'm more of a giver than a receiver, I guess you could say. Yeah. You know, um, you're a cork stuffer. Yes, exactly. I'm one of those. You're not. You're not the bottle of wine. You're the cork. Yeah. After a few glasses of wine. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to end up the bottle of wine. No, 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 no. You never recork a bottle of wine. No, no. Yeah, because you might get some wine on the cork. Yeah. You don't want wine on the cork. You mainly want tears on the cork. No, yeah. <laughs> That's what you want. When you're biting the pillow. You know, hey, actually, I don't let her bite a pillow. Hey, you know what? It's It's healthy. Saves the teeth. It does save the teeth. It saves my fucking pillow. <laughs> it's dentist recommended. Yeah, you know, fucking give her one of those uh, dog chew sticks to bite on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dog. It's those ones that clean your teeth, too, those green Yeah, exactly, ones. and it's, you know, it's uh, eco-friendly. <laughs> it's made out of recycled aluminum. Yeah. That's good for your teeth. It really is. I'm a dentist. Oh, okay. Man of many trades. Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of weird shit. I mean... Apparently, you need to go to school for dentistry, but... Uh, <laughs> Black market? Yeah, define school and define dentistry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about what's going on, um, you know, with you. Or what's been going, what's going on with Grant here? Oh, shit, man. A whole lot of nothing, you know? Still doing the... Still, I work, still working in Monterey. No yeah. big deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Only one of the most richest towns in the world, right? Yeah, I'm the poorest guy there, yeah, so yeah. you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it's currently just trying to get hired by an ambulance company. I got a... Uh, yeah, I was just I was just reading about that, actually. Um, my, yeah. I, I, I saw something posted, and I thought, man, that's badass. Yeah, AMR uh, San Benito County wanted to hire me, mm -hmm. and then um, turns out a nephew of one, like one of the council members, like a, their nephew or whatever, uh, got the job. And it's just like, well, motherfuckers, you knew he was there. And blind behind me, why the hell did you have me waste my time? Mm -hmm. You know, and, oh, it's to make it legal. That's why. Oh, so Jesus. I just wasted my goddamn time. And I just got back from rural metro and Mel fucking Petis. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, there's always, you know, my dad was telling me the other day when I was talking to him that back in the day, there used to be a lot of, you show up, you shake somebody's hand, and then within a few days, if they liked you, you're hired or not, and you did the grit. Yeah. Nowadays, it's almost like getting into college, getting a fucking job. Yeah, you have to. You just have to know like the right people. You have to. Timing's a big issue. Timing's a big issue, and fuck, there's another big issue, but I'm not thinking about, of it. You know, it was really funny. I was just thinking about that the other day about um, how you felt those uh, questionnaires in your job applications. You know how they ask you like from like strongly agree to strongly disagree. Oh, those are fucking horrible. Yeah. You know, it's funny when I I was. <laughs> I was really honest when I first got out of high school. Someone I went and applied because for like Home Depot, right? And they're asking me all those questions, and I was putting the real answers. Like, do you sometimes lose your temper? I strongly agree, you know. Oh fuck yeah! 
<laughs> you know, not knowing that I was fucking myself the whole time. But Yeah, and it's fucked because you have to put strongly agree or strongly disagree. There's no middleman. I don't know if they changed it. Uh-huh. Um, no, I think that now they have something. They have the five point thing. Yeah, but uh, back when... You know, you were getting out yeah. of high school. I was still in high school looking for a job. No one wanted to hire my ass because I was a fucking metal kid with long hair and a zit face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I just looked like a train wreck on paper. And I, plus, I could hardly read and write, so. Yeah. Which much, you look fan. By the way, you guys can't see him, but this guy is Justin Timberlake suit and tie right now. You look fantastic. Yeah, the job interview. I clean up well. Normally, I look like death. <laughs> okay. But anyway, man. But you know, you cleaned up good. Thanks for dressing for the uh, the occasion. And yeah, it was it was a big day for me. I was like, I have an interview at two, and then I have the David Jacob show at six. Double fisting it. You it know was I mean? double fisting it. You know, no way around that. <laughs> you took two cocks to the mouth, right? <laughs> you know, when in Rome. <laughs> you know, if you can, why uh, not? No. But anyway, but yeah, man. I mean, did you? How was it? How was your interview go? Anyway, did it? Was it crazy or? Yeah, it was okay. Um, you know, that's how it. Like, I'm not a real cocky person, so realistically, it was. Eh, it was all right. Yeah. You know, did you have to? You no, know, when you fill out the application, do they make you do the fucking strongly agree, strongly disagree thing? No, now it's just mainly like uh, to get hired by an ambulance company. You mainly just post a little bit about yourself, uh, past work history, why you want to work for this company, what got you into EMS. And then um, you upload your certifications, and then, boom, they'll call you back eventually. The rural metro took three months to call me back. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's funny. I was um, I was working for a company about six years ago, and I never forget one of the guys that was applying. He had told me that he was a former ambulance guy for yeah. fifteen years. He said one of the craziest cases he ever saw in his whole history. So hey, what was the craziest thing he ever saw? And I felt kind of like asking a war vet. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a fucked up question, but I, I was so intrigued because I was interested in that. And he said that he actually went in uh, an apartment caught on fire. He went in and they were looking for the guy. So there was a man in there and they couldn't find the man. Well, eventually they heard some kind of squeaking and they looked on the couch that was burnt and he was... I guess, how do you put it, melted into the couch. And they said that he was still alive. And they had to, like, give him a uh, some sort of a shot to, to like, what, like, euthanize or whatever. Like, Oh, dude, fuck. That was way, and he said that was the most intense thing of his whole 15 years you ever saw. Yeah, because when, like, someone's burned that bad, you know, you just can't, be like, pick them up. Hey, come with me. It's like, you know, the slightest pressure on their skin, their skin will just come right off. Just like, you know, when you burn a marshmallow too mm-hmm. much and it turns black and you can just peel it up. It's just like that. Oh, my God. And the God. smell is horrendous. Yeah. Atrocious. Oh, man. Are you ready for the are you ready for the, uh, the bigs and the littles? Oh, yeah, definitely. You yeah. know, um, a lot of people want to get into it to drive the ambulance code three. That's with the lights and sirens. Yeah. Me, that'd be cool. I'd much rather just, uh, you know, get that phone call at three in the morning for someone trying to off themselves you know be there to talk them out of it yeah you know to be there for someone yeah i'm sure you're gonna see some sadly some horrendous things. oh yeah sadly definitely i had a yeah definitely oh man oh man but you know you also do uh comedic work as well and which kind of bothers me because being me knowing you for for a while now and hearing you as a friend, I mean honestly, I I'm not saying this because you're on the fucking radio, but you, you're you're hilarious, bro. And it makes me upset because you don't play any, hardly any gigs. I mean, I know you're busy, but I mean, how how did you how did you get into comedy? Like, or I guess just natural talent. Natural, yeah, we'll say that. Uh, it started out uh, being drunk at parties, making fun of shit, you know, and then eventually upgraded to jokes. And I was making all my friends laugh, whether they were drunk, yeah, you know, of that. I don't know if that helps, but I like to think I'm funny. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was looking for shows around here. There's not much. Yeah. You know, I mean, they have, sometimes they have open mic nights, except I'm too offensive. Yeah. And the last thing I would need is to get my ass kicked in a parking lot, (laughs) you know? So I'm not going to do that. And um, I don't know. I've been trying to find some places around here that'll let me do that. But I just think that my material is just too raw. Because uh, my favorite comedians are like 
George Carlin, Louis C.K., mm-hmm. uh, Bill Burr, mm-hmm. Greg Giraldo, and uh, there's another one, Mitch Hedberg. You know, mm-hmm. Those two, unfortunately, yeah. passed, but... I can't believe he died. I didn't even know he died until like two months after he was dead. I was so sad. Mitch Hedberg? Yeah, Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, it took, dude, it took me like three years. I was like, oh, fuck, wait, he's dead? Yeah. You know what I mean? That guy was... He was like Beavis and Butthead funny. He was just fucking like out... Like his, his observational humor was just so to the T. Like right. he just... Like, uh, and the was... delivery played, played a big part. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest part is delivery. Delivery. Yeah, and then, I, I know so many guys who have funny material, but they, they can't deliver it. Yeah, and it's sad because I'm like, if you knew how, if you practice your delivery, because I don't think I don't think people, the viewer, they it's it's a popcorn thing. They want to sit down and just enjoy it. I don't think they even realize that they're laughing. Yeah, at the delivery of the joke, not at the joke itself. Because if somebody else told it a different way, it's, it's not like, that funny. Whatever, you know, whatever, man. That's not funny. <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, Greg Giraldo, who passed what, like two, three years ago. He was the guy on all the roasts. No, I, I know who oh, he okay, is. Yeah. Is that the, the dark-haired guy with kind yeah. of the, the five o'clock shadow? Yeah, always just looked like a... <laughs> Rolled out of bed. Wreck. Yeah, dude. He was hilarious, though. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, well, you know, I'm a big fan of Andrew Dice Clay. Did you ever listen to Andrew Dice Clay, or you never got into I him? I couldn't get into him because I saw one part where he was like hating on fags, and I was just like, you know what, dude? I'm not sure if that's part of your act. I don't know, really know who you are, but I fucking hate you. Oh, okay. And now I is. see him now, and he's fucking balding, but he's still trying to keep like the Hulk Hogan haircut going. <laughs> and he's fat as fuck, so I'm like, yeah. fuck you, make fun of gays, you're a douche. Well, it's, it's totally crazy, because back then in the 80s and 90s, I remember me being in school, in, uh, in uh, elementary school, and that was like the okay thing to do was like doing like gay hating. Oh yeah, dude, I was. I, well, I think you were a part of that too. Yeah, right? I gay but, hated, but then like you know, as I got older, I was like, fuck, you know. Let's... But even I'm saying, even like at that for the adults back then, it was almost like saying fuck or damn. Yeah, it was it was okay to do, and now it's crazy because in a positive way, we we've stopped doing that. And it's, yeah. I mean, to a, to a, to a to much agree. higher like, I'll degree. Still say, hey, dude, you're a faggot. Yeah, or a faggot or gay or whatever, but um. Like, I don't know, just, just his delivery on his uh, gay jokes were, like, kind of fucked up, Yeah, I guess. And I just didn't really care for it. So yeah. I never really watched him after that. Yeah, I can say I, 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 I heard can he's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. What other comedians... Do you like any type of shows or anything that really uh, you think don't get enough praise for comedy or... Uh, man, there's um, Trailer Park Boys. Really? Yeah, Trailer I, Park I've Boys. I've always heard of it. I've never seen an episode. Fucking worthless individuals. This Are they? Yeah, they're fucking worthless. <laughs> It's amazing that, and it's like uh, always sunny in Philadelphia, but on s- crack. Okay, you know what I mean. It's, there's so much more fucked up and disgusting. I, I I've only got to season three of Always Sunny, and I never. I was too lazy to go back. I enjoy it, but Ooh. obviously, and not, obviously not too crazy. But I I did enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, it's a good show. It really is. And then um, I don't know. There's so many shows out now. I fucking hate uh, workaholics, and everyone loves workaholics. I never even seen that. Yeah, the guy, one of the characters, is just too fucking ugly for words. <laughs> Wait, is that on TBS? No, that's on Comedy Central. Oh, okay. Yeah, but and then uh, yeah, there's just so many comedy shows, and uh, I don't know how they're funny. Like I look, like I'll watch them, and I'm like that's not. I don't get it. Well, I don't get is how they stay on. Some of these stay on TV. I get it if a producer thought it was funny, he made the show, but then we're six seasons deep. Oh yeah, like either someone's pumping the money out for that to stay on and ignoring ratings, or maybe am I just weird? I don't find it funny. I mean, I know everyone has their own taste, but I think there's a general sense of what's funny. Archer is another one I like. Archer. Yeah. Oh, Archer. Archer. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. one. But back to your uh, thing. Yeah, there's a few of them like that. Fucking. What's his name that keeps kicking that dead horse, Tyler Perry? <laughs> you know, he is just yeah. not funny. He just never made me laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I've I, heard him talk. He seems like a really nice guy, yeah, but his comedy like fucking, is... He seems like a total dope person to hang out with, but... Yeah, I'm not digging... Yeah, I, I gotta agree with him that. He needs to stop dressing in drag with that Medea bullshit. That's what I'm saying. I mean, he is, he is soaking the Medea... He literally Gig, he, he's, to, to the bone. He's fucking that into the ground, dude. Yeah, he's really just. I think it's. I think they're at Medea twenty six or something like. It's, it's. There's a lot of them. There's, there's too there's many. Like, yeah, no one needs that much. Yeah, yeah. I hate. I don't like those comedians. Still, I'll just keep hammering one joke until it's 
fucking <laughs> gone. You know what I mean? There's still everyone's like, oh, fuck, same shit. Great. Top four uh, comedies ever. Your, 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 your choice. Oh, shit. That's... You're locked in a room. They're like, hey, Grant, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what other people think. We're going to give you four um, of all, four of uh, comedies out of all the series, blah, blah, blah. Which ones would you pick? Intervention. <laughs> um, definitely Super Troopers. Uh, okay. No, no, I meant TV shows. Oh, okay. Okay. Intervention. Okay. Um, God, what's another one? Anything on Lifetime, because a woman usually gets hit. Um, <laughs> right now, 50 people fell off the view. Oh, fuck you, David. <laughs> Only male listeners from no, here on out. But realistically, I find Intervention hilarious. Yeah. Um, Comedy, uh, Archer. <laughs> Gotta have that Always Sunny in Philadelphia and Trailer Park Boys. That's it. You're locked in the room. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I mean, not to, like, bash addicts, but, you know, come on. No, yeah, no, I got you. I got come you. On. I do support NA and AA. No. I don't know. Do I have to justify these sort of things? No, it's here? okay. Um, We're on a fucking, it's my show. Okay, yeah, because, like, I don't want someone to like, come up and go, hey, you hate addicts. Like, well, no. I've, my whole family's are, my family's a pile of addicts. <laughs> Let's just tone it down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're a carrot complaining about carrots. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. My is that a bad? Is that a bad? Was that, was, that a, was that a low blow? Or I don't understand what that was, but I agreed with it because it took me like five seconds. Like carrot complaining about carrots. Yeah, meaning like you were saying that your family's full of addicts. You you were allowed to talk about it because. Yeah. yeah totally. Okay. You know, and I battled with uh, your own issues. Yeah. You know, which I think is great because you going back to the paramedic thing. I think you kind of know when something's happening to somebody. You're like, oh, I, I kind of have an idea what he's going through. Yeah, exactly. There's That's... a little more bedside manner, in yes. the sense of, hey, you know, I'm gonna, you know, instead of some dick, throw him in the fucking bed. You know, like, you yeah, know. you know, you have to fucking treat that because no matter what, it's always going to be someone something, right? You know, son or daughter, uh, father, or mom, wife or husband. It's always someone some. It's always somebody is something right. to them, you know? And um, you, know, you just can't be a dick to it when people are, like, fucking down and out. No. You, know, you see someone fucking hanging, acting crazy with a syringe in their arm, and you immediately think, oh, they probably just slammed a whole bunch of ice. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you know? Mm-hmm. You, know, you just can't assume that. Maybe he's hypoglycemic, you know, and just for some reason has a needle in his arm. Mm-hmm. And you've got to treat him with dignity and respect. Yeah. Wow. Uh. Well, maybe they'll be. Maybe you'll uh, you'll uh, give them a season of intervention to watch when they're in the hospital. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't think anyone wants to watch that. That's a fucking horrible <laughs> show. You know, I I get mad because I'd watch the show and then at the end it's like we're going to uh, the therapy or whatever, and I'm like yes. And then it's all two months later. Uh, they found him in a street. Oh yeah, the, how do you read the, the follow up? Yeah, the follow up. Uh, we came back uh, three months later and saw Mauricio. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> slamming meth and punching cats. Yeah, <laughs> he eventually got hit by a car. Poor Mauricio. Sold his kids. Oh, uh, poor Mauricio. <laughs> Mauricio, dude. Is that a real name? I think it is. That's a real fucking Mauricio. <laughs> God damn, dude. I'm gonna name my kid Mauricio. Nah. <sighs> by the way, I'm having a kid. Congratulations. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what the fuck? Who would have, who would reproduce? Oh man. Uh, no, I have a few of my friends have had kids. Uh, obviously, they're all an accident. Yeah, you know. Um, I like I like how you know. I always wonder how many people say, "Oh, we we wanted you since day one. We wanted that's a child." Bullshit. I, I mean, maybe ten percent out of the hundred might may have done that. Maybe, but the story is 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 about a hundred percent out of a hundred. Oh, we really plan. You know, you don't say the condom busted and yeah, no, you, you don't know. tell your kid that. Of course, you say, "No, we really loved you." Most of you that are listening to this were probably an accident. Yeah. Like, I know that. Yeah. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure as hell probably am one, you know? Hey. It's all good, though. <sighs> I gotta, gotta back out of the driveway before the oil leaks. Yeah, exactly. I'm my dad's favorite mistake. At least I like <laughs> to think so. But you know what, man? You know, I was, I was reading the other day, I was um, checking out your Facebook, actually, because we're, we're buddies, is, you know... The straight guys do that. Straight guys do that. I mean, I had one hand in my jeans, but I don't know if that counts. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but seriously, man, you write some funny-ass shit on Facebook. 
I mean, do you, how come you don't take some of that shit and hit the road with it? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't like to reuse jokes, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, and I know I'm sure for definitely for sure on Facebook that I've definitely said the same thing twice, but unintentionally. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, I just probably like if I did hit the road, I wouldn't use anything on Facebook. Maybe like two or three things that I found funny. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I created an eHarmony account and found out my dad was gay. That's my favorite <laughs> one still to this day. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta let it sink in a little bit. Yeah. No, man. I don't even know if they allow gays on eHarmony. Did you get por- poked on uh, eHarmony? No, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I was wondering. No, um... Hopefully I got dad three... didn't poke you on eHarmony. He wanted to. You he know, wanted cause... to poke you on eHarmony. Yeah, who wouldn't, you know? Yeah. No, um, I did get a few restraining orders. You know, it's kind of the territory. You know, because apparently, like, when you type, you would look good in all black tied up in my bed. <laughs> and replace bed with basement, cold, dark, cold. You know what I mean? People can take it the wrong way. It's, it's, uh, e- it's, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to take the wrong way. You were being harmless. I was being facetious. Yeah. And she chose to be a bitch. <laughs> And call the cops. My dad's a lieutenant in the police department. Well, fuck you and fuck your dad. I'll fuck him too. Anyways, long story short, a cop came over to my house and uh, this wasn't the sexiest time I've had. No? But God, he was he he put me in this hold. Ugh. Like, uh, I don't know if you enjoy getting your arm twisted. No. Well, I mean, as long as it's not by a woman. Right. So, Because this man was strong. You know, he threw me to the ground put me in a hold and... I kind of got a little turned on by it. You know? <laughs> Did your butt raise off the floor because the Woody, I'm a, I'm the a Woody power was bottom. pushing it? Yeah, yeah, I'm a power <laughs> bottom. Definitely. The Woody was pushing up off the floor? Oh, yeah. It was a steely. It was, <laughs> it was all metal. Uh, he probably turned around and went, dead ass. That dead ass, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, boy. Drink a two liter Kool-Aid up that ass. Oh man! Well, you know, I noticed you have like a what is this sticking out? Is, oh, it's tight. It's like a little knife, or what is this? Yeah, it's just a little uh, pocket knife. It's pretty badass. Let me see that actually. Yeah, of course. It is. This a, thing's fucking badass. It has an dude. auto lock system. You could literally punch it through a like car door, and it won't fold back on you and cut your fucking hand. This thing's rad. Dude. It's like all pitch black and hella sharp, but it's like a nice little handle. Yeah, and it's like the it's not big. It's uh. It's just like the right huh. size, you know? Yeah. If you need it for anything, whether defense or uh, cutting fucking boxes, what Someone, I use. Did you get this from somebody? or? Yeah, and it has a, a locking system in here. Yeah, I actually picked it up at a Carmel Cutlery. What is that? Carmel Cutlery. Oh, okay. Over in uh, Carmel by the Sea. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a fucking really rad place. The owner, I think his name is Steven. Okay. Stephen. Um, I can never tell what those names is it. It's with a PH. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it could be Stefan or Steve. I think it's like tomato, tomato. Okay, well, whatever. It's a fucking rad guy. Yeah. Um, he sells all kinds of fucking badass knives to this uh, cricket that I got here. To uh, shit, I'm blanking on my knives now. Well, you know it's funny. I, um, now that I see your knife, I, I used to have this knife where you hold it like in the middle. It's like a gripper, but the blades were on each side. It almost looks like a Wolverine type of knife. Oh, okay. It's like yeah. a boomerang, but you could like do like this crisscross thing. Or... Oh, yeah, that's that's a fucking. That... I, don't, I don't know the name of it, but I don't want to be around that knife personally. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a reason for it. But yeah, he has those knives. He has fucking swords. He has uh, little pocket knives. That I'm you... surprised I haven't been there. It's yeah, you should go check it out. That's fucking everything you want there. That's knife related, and he does sharpening for cheap too. Oh, that's fucking tight. Man. Yeah. I think even for free. Well, sometimes. it's crazy because you got to protect yourself nowadays. Yeah, you do. You, you never know, know what the hell is going to happen. This fucking crazy ass world, man. You know, yeah. you got you got to just really. Yeah, you. I mean, you really have to. You, I mean, I'm a big fan of knives because knives don't run out of bullets. Exactly. <laughs> it's close combat, you know. And if you know how to use a knife, you know how to end a life. Yeah, it's a crazy world, man. But you know what? Speaking of that. Um, I don't know if I should bring this up on air, but you told me that you actually had an incident once where you were stabbed. Is that true? Yeah. I, not only did I get... I've been stabbed and I've been jumped. Uh-huh. And I don't know which one you want me to talk about first. Nah, uh, let's do the stabbed one. The stabbing one was uh, 
right over on East San Luis and Soledad. It's like right where Salinas starts to get kind of fucky. Right. And uh, what happened was, is me and my friend just got back from Monterey, and we were standing in front of his house smoking cigarettes, just shooting the shit like normal fuck, normal fucks do. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this car rolls up, and these people shout out shit, and uh, we were like, oh, well, that's weird, you know, because there's a bar down the street. We just figured they're coming back from the bar, and they're... Just uh, fucked up and drunk. Just fucked up and drunk. So we didn't uh, mention, we didn't say anything to him. We just fucking like, well, that's cool, whatever. And then um, a little bit, like 10 minutes passes by, and the car goes and parks in a, a apartment complex. I'm like, okay, cool, they're going home. Right. Like, thank God. And what time was this at? Like at 10, 9. At night? Yeah. Oh, that's shitty. Yeah, it wasn't even that, it wasn't even like that late. And so anyways... I see this uh, this guy's coming walking walking up on us, and for the first time in my life, I didn't judge the person. I was just like, "Oh, that guy's probably coming home from the bar, just like those other guys were." Didn't for once in my life didn't put two and three together. And he passes all of my friends, and he lunges at me and starts stabbing me, or I thought he was hitting me. Hold on, oh, drank water too quick. No, oh, no problem. Uh, so yeah, he lunges at me and. Uh, what I, th- I thought he was punching me, you know? So I was bobbing and weaving with him, and then I see him go for a chest shot. I'm like, oh, fuck you, dude. You're not punching me in the chest, you little bitch. And I block the chest shot with my uh, with my arm, and uh, it breaks the hold on his knife. He drops the knife, and he takes off running, and I'm sitting there, not knowing, still not knowing that there's a knife involved. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck, dude? Get back here. I'm going to fuck you up. I mean, this guy took off his, like, you know when kids run so fast, they're... Uh, Legs hit their ass. It's like cartoons. Yeah, like I saw a man do that. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, what a fucking bitch. So I'm standing there, and my friend Joey is like, hey, dude, there's a knife on the ground. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, queer. There's no knife on the ground. You're you're bullshitting me. Anyways, sure enough, I look on the ground. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And then I lift open my shirt, and I'm just pouring out blood. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude, this sucks. Uh, Well, Anthony, you're taking me to the hospital. That's your job. Because I knew ambulance wasn't going to get there quick enough. I wasn't sure what the fuck was going on. Whether I like, had a collapse lung or not. My adrenaline just immediately kicked in. Right. And um, I was like, fucking take me to the hospital. I can't imagine what that <clears throat> feels like right afterwards and think. Because you feel like you're such in shock, you don't feel it. Yeah, no, But, but there, it. There's, a, there's a fear of, am I going to pour out here? Yeah, am I gonna, like, I honestly thought I was going to like bleed out there for, for a while. Right. And it's what's the ride, what seemed like forever, which is just down the street to Salinas SVMH. When you're pouring out. Yeah. So I get into the ER room. Some guy actually literally tries to pick a fight with me in the ER room, like in the lobby. I walk in there and he's, uh, you know, I said, hey, I just got stabbed. I need to get fucking help, dude. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. And this guy comes up to me and says, calm down, eh? And this fucking cop immediately just grabs him by the back of the head and just pushes him, like, does something to him, and then an ER doctor comes and picks me up because we called 911 on our way there. Now, why was he getting in shit with you? I had, fuck, I don't know, dude. Probably because he thought I was being a bitch, dude. I had blood pouring out of my ass. And, um, so yeah, the cop went and handled that. Fucking good guy cop, right? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so I go and I'm getting sewn up, and, uh, I'm sitting there just talking shit. Like, not mean shit, just sitting there making the ER doctors laugh because I put myself in their shoes. And I'm one of those people that just, you know, I'm fucking at the hospital. I'm cool. Everything's like, yeah, cool. What, you, yeah, what, you gonna, what else are you going to do? Yeah, like fucking the hot. They're going to take care of me. I got this. So I was sitting there bullshitting with them. As I was getting sewn up, though, I started to pass out because I could feel like this started to hurt. And I asked for zero anesthesia because uh, just my family being an addict, I have addict in me. I was like, I don't want I don't want any like pain meds, anything like that. Yeah. You might be might come back, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what would happen. So I was like, no, I'll just I'm cool, just numb me with like the numbing agent and sew me up. Totally cool. Anyways, as the doctor was sewing me up, uh, this nurse comes in and I'm like I have my shirt off. I look fat and gross. Like I'm not gonna lie to you and say yeah. I look good shirtless. And I what I wanted to say was, Oh my god, I bet this nurse is so fucking disgusted. What I ended up saying was, oh, my God, this fucking nurse is disgusting. And she got, she, like, almost started crying and said, fine, I'll leave, and took off. And I, then I passed out. Oh, no. Yeah, and then I just fucking passed out, woke up, like, like a minute later. 
And the doctor was still sitting there fucking laughing, sewing me up. And then I was just back to talking shit. And the doctor's like, dude, Grant, you got to shut the fuck up. I, I, I can't laugh while I'm sewing you up, dude. This isn't cool. So that was, that was cool. Uh, SPD didn't do shit. I mean, I, I love Salinas Police. But the times that I needed them, they didn't do anything. Um, as I was getting sewn up, I called my friend, Ryan, who happened to live at the residence where I got right. stabbed. I was like, hey, dude, go out with a plastic bag, pick up the knife, and uh, cops are going to be there soon. And um, give it to them and tell them where they went and parked their car. And he's like, okay, cool, I got this. Uh, he goes and cops come and he does the exchange with them. And the cops say to him, shit, you not. He said, oh, we can't go over there due to lack of evidence. And my friend Ryan's like, dude, this is the knife. My friend just got stabbed. He's over at SVMH. Do your fucking job. And the cops didn't do shit. Damn, dude. That's fucking some bullshit. Yeah. Oh, and I guess they also... Uh, that guy came back with three more guys trying to finish me off. I'm doing the air quotes here. Yeah. Yeah, but no. I would have fucked that guy up. You mean they came back later to the same spot? Yeah, they came back like right after I left. Like, this all happened within five minutes. The story I told you was just a five-minute Why, why would he run off and then he come back? Because he was in that car that said uh, shit to us. Mm-hmm. And so they parked at that apartment complex, and then him and his boys came back. Well, like I said, I don't know what they are doing, but quote-unquote maybe finish me off or something, because I'm sure as shit they're not going to say, hey, dude, sorry we stabbed you. Yeah. Do you want to hang out? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it wasn't like that. You know, I got a good doctor right now. You know? Yeah. So there was there was that, and it was... It was pretty interesting, and it didn't hit me that someone tried to kill me until I went back to the police department, like, the next day. And I uh, was like, hey, I just got stabbed the other day. And he was like, oh, you're the attempted 187 on uh, East San Louis. And I was like, yeah. Fuck, yeah. Because it took me a second to realize what 187 was. Right. Thanks to the Sam Jackson movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And uh, I was like, fuck, dude, someone tried to kill me? That's fucked up. What a dick. Right. You know what I mean? And then... Did you have the whole thing where the next day you just thought about what really matters in life? That whole thing kind of kicked in. No. When no. You went back to just being regular? Yeah, no, I had a, I still have a little PTS from it. Um, yeah, well, but I played a show that Friday. This happened on a Tuesday. Right. I ended up playing a show that, that Friday at Rolex. Wow, man. But anyways, um, yeah. Well, that's no. fucking intense, like... We, I don't know for you uh, who are listening who may not be in this area at Salinas, but this is a pretty, uh, it could be a pretty rough town at some at certain points, and we have a lot of deaths here. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, so it's not unheard of to have these things happen. Yeah. Which is weird because if you go anywhere else, that's not Compton. Yeah. It's but, like, that's a big deal. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Yeah, but over here, it's like, oh, another one? It's, it's you know, so. Yeah, even the police were like, that's the most... Uh... The officer's like, in the past 10 years, this is the most random act of violence I've seen. Wow. Yeah. It was just so random. Like, I didn't engage the people. No. Normally, I would. But for some reason, that night, I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to say anything. Right. They're drunk as fuck. I don't know. I'm thinking that they were drunk as fuck. Turns out it was a gang initiation for that guy. But, um, yeah. I think they did go back to try to finish you because they didn't want any, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Witnesses. Witness testimonial. Yeah, no, fuck that kid. Like, I was still standing. He tried to kill me. I was still standing there waiting to fight him. Mm -hmm. Like, he wasn't going to, if he would have, if we would have squared off, he would have gotten fucked for the rest of his life. It's crazy because you think that, I I mean, I guess it kind of goes in slow motion because you think when they're doing stuff, you, you can see it come, but you have no time to react, but it's real fast. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like, like I was, so you're just kind of just doing this thing. Yeah, I was bobbing and weaving, blocking his hits as best as I could. And then when I saw the chest shot, I was like, this guy's fucking serious. Because mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what was going on. Well, how, how did you tell? Did you cock back and go for it? or No, like it. Like you just kind of seen the arm coming that way? As soon as I saw the arm coming that way, yeah, I just put my arm up, blocked it, then went to go in for a hit. And he was already, he took off. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Oh, yeah, thanks. No, serious. That's some fucked up shit. Yeah. Damn, dude. It almost seems like... You've seen Fight Club. Yeah. You know the part where they take the Japanese dude, they put a gun to his head and tell him to, he'll, he'll die if he's not on his way to being a vet? Mm-hmm. I, well, that's kind of like trying to help the guy, but this is a different thing. This is like you got, you know, you were fucking a victim of some violence for no reason. Yeah, exactly. But does that same mentality happen where you're like, 
dang, dude, like things can just happen. Yeah, things can nowhere. just happen out of nowhere. Yeah. Are you more alert when you're out now? Does that did that cause you to be more eye open, watch what's coming quickly, more observant? Yeah, still to the like I said, I do have a form of PTS to mm-hmm. where um, I'm if you'll always see me facing the door. Right. Um, I know where most exits are in buildings that I go into. Um, just shit like that, you know. Well, hey, man, I'm glad you're here, and I'm that's what's that's a good thing you're doing the emergency thing now. And now yeah, you're, exactly. now you're helping people. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you could be there for them. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully, I might do the police academy. I don't know. Who knows? Who yeah. you know? As long as you're doing something. Yeah, I definitely won't be those one of those dick cops. Like, oh, kid, you're smoking weed. Well, how do you like probation? You know what I mean? Not like that. Well, buddy, I think that's about it for our time. I appreciate you coming on and. Uh, Thanks for ha- thanks for coming on, dude. Yeah, of course. You know, have me back again. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. It was fun talking. I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, man. Thanks again. All right, everyone. It's Grant Johnson. Be on the lookout for him if he's gonna start start doing clubs, man. Start doing clubs. The thing is, there's not money around here. I uh, talked to one of my friends, Cynthia. I don't know if you know her, but she uh, she's like a Facebook friend, and mm-hmm. I've seen her at shows. Mm-hmm. And she want she was asking for like open mics at Jack London's, and I asked her about. You know, uh, did a comment, hey, uh, what about comedy? Never heard anything back. So mm. maybe that's not the... Well, it's in, maybe it's not the place, yeah. It's, it's fucking Carmel. You know yeah. what I mean? They don't want to hear someone say, like, fucking dick jokes. Or <laughs> yeah. whore, talking about whores. Or you know, clubs. I would love it. That's just my own dirty personality. But, yeah. I would, I, but if I was sitting there in a nice place and that shit went off, I'd be loving it. Yeah, yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. You know, fuck it. All right, guys. Well, hey, check out our show next week. Um, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And thanks again, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks, bro.